Uh, speaking of villains, Spotify. Mm. Overlord Hour. Okay, so we're going to be talking about Spotify and some of their new things. They I hate did that I have to use Spotify all the time. Yeah, me too, man. Um, they have... They had a little bit of a press event mm-hmm. them, where they kind of announced some new changes to their platform. One is uh, Spotify's high fidelity tier, um, which will help them expand into new markets, but also allow people to get higher quality streaming music. Um, I think the point's been made that with all of us streaming music on our like shitty 3G, occasionally 4G connections, getting beamed to our like sound quality, absolutely destroying Bluetooth earbuds, yes. I think paying more money for like high quality streaming music is a niche thing. Although maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Tidal will make a lot of money off of hi-fi music streaming and be able to save their career. Again, like so my point is that I don't think having a um sound quality tier A, most people are going to use it. Even people who think of themselves as like audiophiles are going to notice it that much because music streaming is just, we're far gone that point. Yeah, it really, because um, I've tried it, I've dabbled in it before to see um, high quality ones. And the only noticeable difference to me is when you use different headphones. That's when I could really tell the difference of audio quality. But if I'm using my wireless earbuds, they're okay. They're not the greatest, obviously, but with when I change it from like low quality stream to high quality, there really is not much of a difference. Yeah, I, I was able to notice differences of low and high quality streaming in Spotify like five years ago when all of my headphones were wired. Exactly. <laughs> Earbuds but, and like they work directly that way. Yeah. But now it's I... Not, you're not really getting that much. Yeah, it's just the thing is that even if you have like the nicest AirPods or the nicest Galaxy Buds that haven't broken for two weeks, what is the record? <laughs> um, that there's still a little bit of quality issue because sending sound wirelessly over it's, Bluetooth is just not built to deliver... Yeah even CD quality audio properly, or um, vinyl quality audio, or FLAC files. Uh, Gotta love your FLAC. Um, But yeah, the hi-fi plans, I'm not sure what the pricing will be on those, but you'll be sure to expect those in a while. The bigger thing here is Spotify doing kind of what we expected and called a little bit while, like not called as like declaratively said, but in passing I've definitely made this remark that they'll ultimately want to become YouTube for for, um, audio. And that will include music and musicians, such as like YouTube has a big following of music and musicians and music videos especially. Mm -hmm. I don't know anyone who goes to Spotify to watch a music video. That's just insane. No. Um, But Spotify's also made a lot of different tricks in the podcasting scene where they have um, acquired different companies from Anchor, which makes it really easy for people to create podcasts, to Megaphone, which makes it um, really easy for you to get your podcast... um, have advertisers and have them like insert ads into the podcast. So they've bought that technology and now they're going to try to integrate it into their platform so that eventually at some point, maybe this year or next year, Spotify will be like YouTube to where you can look at the music that's already up there. You can look at the podcast that's already up there and there'll be a big button for you to upload your own things and manage that in your own way and start to build your community. It's going to be interesting to see how it works. Um, Uh, Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how few people get paid from that. Yeah, (laughs) obviously. Because during this conversation, uh, CEO Daniel Ek um, of Spotify was also kind of bragging about how Spotify is doing great, but there's uh, much more room for improvement to go. One of the figures touted was that um, Spotify announced that 7,500 musicians are making at least $100,000 a year through its platform, which is... A number like devoid of context because there are far more than 7,500 musicians on Spotify. Uh, many of them should be making more than $100,000. In fact, the ones who aren't in that $7,500 should be making more than that for how often they're streamed. Um, there's just some fundamental economics that Spotify yeah. does not seem to like want to actually work out there. It's complicated, I know, because like um, getting artists paid more would probably mean price increases, but I got news for you. Over the next 10 years from Spotify, we're going to see price increases and artists are not going to be paid anymore. That's just how capitalism works. The price increases are built in, but not the profit sharing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, um, the reporter from The Verge, Ashley Carmen, did a really good job, I think, of like pushing back here, um, kind of saying that Listen, you have exclusives like uh, the Joe Rogan podcast mm-hmm. and all these different things. Uh, you've bought podcast studios like Gimlet and you spent like billions of dollars on this stuff acquiring it. Like, where's it going? What is it doing? Are you making money yet? And Daniel X doing the usual, you know, we'll see. We'll get there. We'll do these kinds of things. Meanwhile, we're going to try to make podcasting less of a free medium and more like YouTube to where there's going to be ads all the time. And yeah, Google knows all about those ads and tracking. It's just sort of, he's thoroughly fucking up the platform. But I mean... It's either Apple or Spotify. So that's just kind of the world it is. Double-edged sword. Yeah. Uh, capitalism, baby. 